Let's open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time together. As we get into your word, be in our conversation, Lord. Be in the class. And you speak to us, Lord, through your word. We just commit it into your hands. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're at Genesis 39, verse 11. I hope we're going to finish 39 tonight. I was saying that we've been taking so long to get through this. I'm just hoping we can get finish this out by the time we go into the end of May. If not, we'll have to come back and after summer finish the road. <laughs> but it's been a good conversation. I've been enjoying the time together. Everybody get one? Yeah, okay. So, then, let's, let's read verses 11 and 12, 39, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. And it says, <clears throat> But it happened about... This time, when Joseph went into the house to do his work, and none of the men of the house was inside, that she, she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. Some of the times, the most spiritual thing you can do is just run. Just get out of there. And Joseph was young enough to know. Now, obviously, there was a lot of different people in this household um, remember, he was an officer for the king. Um, he probably had a lot of staff in the house. But Potiphar's wife created a situation where there was no one in the house but Joseph and her. And that's never good. You know, just, if you find yourself in odd things like that. I always took a policy very early on in my ministry. Someone could say, well, can I come down and, you know, just and talk to you? Well, not by yourself you can and I was like, I won't meet with you. And they used to get mad at me and say, well, no, well I just want to need to talk to you. I said, well, I need you to bring somebody else along. <laughs> and we're not going to create a situation that could be, that looks bad. So to avoid the very appearance of evil. And so Joseph, he understood that at a very young age. And so he um, got caught. That's why I can tie to this. Joseph resists. And she had her brazen attempt at seduction, and she put him in that situation. And so, Potiphar's wife knew Joseph had been avoiding her, okay, and staying away from her, and, and keeping a distance because of what she's been trying to do. We don't even know how long that went on. It could have been for years, what we talked about a few weeks ago. And so, she made a deliberate attempt to entrap him. And when she caught his garment, both off it came. Now, this doesn't mean he was naked. That means it was, he had an outer garment. Most likely, he had the undergarment. And after that, oh, he just left it in her hand, and he ran outside. And he knew what he was doing. Because remember, this is to him. He's the slave. She's the master's wife. But yet, the same token, they all knew and understand that he was a follower of Yahweh. And... Uh, she was trying to get him in a very bad situation. 2 Timothy 2.22. This is an easy one to remember. 2 Timothy 2.22. And I don't want to read it all. But it basically says, flee useful lust. And it, sometimes the most spiritual thing you can do is run. Just get out of the situation. Don't try to talk. Just go. And then uh, and it'll work out on its own. And too many times, it's not that we're running towards sin, but seven more time. But usually, sometimes, you know, we in our humanness and our brokenness, situations come up. Sometimes we'll, huh, we'll linger and ponder that for a minute. In times like this, you don't have that moment to linger. You got to run and go. And that's exactly what he did. So he left his garment. The idea is not that he ran away naked, but again, he had taken the outer garment and he was gone. And I'm sure he knew there was a price that was going to be paid. Uh, he fled and ran outside. And this price was going to cost him dearly. He probably did not know. But in, under that time period, the things how it was, to be, to be accused of anything like that as a slave meant instant death. There was no, well, we'll take you to court and all the stuff that we have. It would have just been, he's the slave. This is what they claim he's done, put him to death. And so, he fled and ran outside. 
verses uh, 13 through 18. And it says, And so it was when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and fled outside, that she called to the men of her house. See, there, wherever she, they were, they usually were in the house. They were part of that household taking care of, of all the things that needed to be done. She had gotten them out of there. Now she's got seeking them out. And she's saying that she caught hit by the garment, so that they left his garment. It says, so it was when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and fled outside that she called to the men of her house and spoke to them saying, see, he has brought into us a Hebrew to mock us. And he came in to, lie, to me to lie with me and I cried out with a loud voice. And it happened when he heard that I lifted my voice and cried out that he left his garment with me. Isn't it amazing how this story's changing, huh? Um, he left his garment with me and fled and went outside. So she kept his garment with her until his master came home. Then she spoke to him with words like these, saying, The Hebrew servant whom you brought to us came in to mock me. So it happened as I lifted my voice and cried out that he left his garment with me and fled outside. So, Potiphar's wife is now falsely accusing him. That's why it's not, you don't want to put yourself in that situation. Because it can happen. And I don't know if I told you the story from these, along these same lines. When we first came here and I took the church um, up on Black Canyon Highway, the church that I pastored, which was called First Church. Um, we had just met the people. And I had shared this, that Linda, the Lord gets her insight to this stuff. We barely have a whole group of people there. And she corners me afterwards before we're going home and says, see that person there? She says, you watch out for her. And I said, Linda, why would you say that? You don't even know who that is. You don't even know her name. No, you be careful. Watch out for her. And so time went by. I never put myself in a position because I was very guarded about those things. But she came to me one time after service. It was a little church. It probably ran about 200 people. And uh, we just had the one service, but it was just the habit after the service, you know, we'd say amen, and I'd go down the aisleway, and I'd open up the double doors, went outside, and Linda and I'd stand there and kind of shake the people's hands as they all went out. That was just kind of the way we did it. And so she made a point to say to me, Linda was there, but she was like a personal way talking to someone else. And this person said to me, uh, Pastor Ron, yes? You can put your shoes under my bed anytime you want. <laughs> and I thought, oh wow, her husband's a deacon in that church. Wow. And yeah, it was a, it was a, <laughs> I'm 28 years old. Okay, and so first thing I did is I got home and told Linda, the smartest thing you ever did, it says, hey, Linda, you were absolutely right. right. <laughs> I'll never question you. So when she said, now all these years went by, she says anything like that, I listen. I've learned <laughs> to listen, okay? And because uh, the Lord just gives her insight like that, to, to know. And uh, it, it, it turned out, well, I'm getting old, that story, but it was a mess, but um, it finally worked out. And uh, it, it, it's just terrible. And so, but you have these things that happen in life. And the best thing to do is just avoid and stay away from it. Because um, the enemy can use that stuff. And even in this case, look what the enemy's doing with this. And he did nothing wrong. He did it completely right. He got out of there and she flipped that story completely. I don't think the devil won't do work through somebody to, get, to make that happen. He does it. He does. So anyway, here they are. So, and Joseph's master took him. In the next, it says that they took him and put him into the prison. Verse nineteen and twenty. So it was when his masters heard the words which his wife spoke to him, saying, "Your servant did to me after this manner," that his anger was aroused. Well, I'm going to show you later. Um, we assume that his anger was aroused to Joseph. I'm going to suggest that his anger was aroused to his wife. Mm -hmm. That he had more insight to what was really going on there. And I'll share with you why when we get, when we get there. Um, <clears throat> but we got to remember who he is. He's, he's over 
He's like the secret service, the head of the secret service for the for Pharaoh. That's what we call that today. Okay. And so it was when his master heard his words that your servant did after this man that he was anger was aroused. Then Joseph's master took him and put him into prison. See, he should have been killed. He should have been put to death. But his, he didn't do that. He took him and put him in prison, a place where the king's prisoners were confined. And it was there, and he was there in the prison. Now, I don't know about you, I end up like that, I'll probably be wringing my hands, okay, what's going on, Lord? Why are you letting this happen? I did the right thing. You do not see one word, not one word of that kind of thinking coming out of that young man. Remember, he's only, well, at this point in time, he ends up in prison, so it's 11 years ago, went by. He's like 28 years old. He's young. And not a word. And so, he was normally would have been put to death for something like that. Okay, let's go to the other side. His anger was aroused. Potiphar went easy on Joseph, I believe, because he suspected his wife's role in this matter. The anger aroused may not have been directed toward Joseph, but against his wife for manipulating not only Joseph, but manipulating him to leave him no other thing to either put him to death or put him in prison. Remember, this is the man that ran his household and everything's been running smooth for all these years. Everything's just running great. Everything Joseph touches turns good. And Potiphar understood that. And now this comes up. And he's not that kind of man. And I'm going to show you why in, in a few minutes here, when we get to why I believe that Potiphar knew that there was another side of this story, but the way it was put out there, you know, I can't call my wife a liar and say the slave is right. Um, everyone else would say, kill him, but he didn't do that. And so he's now he's in prison. And he's not wringing his hand asking God, what's going on here, Lord? Why am I ending up in this place? And so, in verses 21 through 23, it says, But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy. And he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners who were in the prison. Does that sound familiar? Potiphar gave everything to run his household into Joseph's hand. Yeah, it's just like um, Leah and Rachel and... Yeah. yeah, yeah, and the same stories move forward. Here it is again. But notice who, who put him in that position to see there's something there in this young man. And they gave him the authority. Now all the prisoners work and now all the thing that's carrying on is now coming to Joseph, which he also is a prisoner. And we don't run our prisons like that today. That'd be a little weird, wouldn't it? have one prisoner dictating the authority to have everybody else that what they're supposed to do and how this prison's ran all was falling into the hands of Joseph but who gave him that authority what's the storyline said well optimally yes we know that but what's it say in the verses that I read who put him over all this stuff the keeper of the prison. and who's the keeper of the prison Ultimately, everything falls under the officer of all the runs of the government. It's Potiphar is the keeper of the prison. We don't read that in that storyline like that. And so, why would he do that if he did this with his wife? I think he suggests, he, his anger was aroused with his wife. She's put me in a dilemma that I can't get out of, and I'm going to have to put him in there. At least if I'm having to put him in there, I'm ahead of all of this stuff. I'm going to now let him prosper in there and get all that stuff 
going like he did in my household. That's not by accident that that story is like that. But we normally don't read it like that. We think of him as somebody else. But you see, all of that side of things was all that, uh, the official over all of that uh, was Potiphar. <clears throat> and he did it for the king. So, the keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority because the Lord was with him. And here it is. Everything that young man touches, God blesses. And whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. So even in the things that we can't control, even in the storyline of our lives, there's things that come up that we this question to say, why God? Do you realize that through even, the, the, this looks really bad, doesn't it? Because I don't think the prisons in that country, in that time period, were anything like the prisons that we have in this country. They were rough places to be. Tough places to be. And I can't see a lot of, you know, a lot of prisons around the world, you, you wouldn't want to end up in them. Very t and I believe this was more along those lines. But yet he arose to that because the keeper of the prison, he said, I'm not looking at, I know that young man, I know what he can do. And if I've got to keep him in prison, I have no choice because my wife set this thing up this way. And so his anger was aroused about the whole deal. But I'm going to put him in authority in there. We're going to, he'll get this mess straightened out. And he did. Just like the household was all straightened out and everything ran smoothly, he's doing the same thing and now he's running a prison. And yet, we would be saying, why? Why? But even in all of this, and as bad as it is, it didn't short-circuit God's plan one bit, did it? Sometimes the hardest things we face in life, if you look back at, after the fact in later times and look at them and say, that's the reason why this happened like that. God had a reason for it to teach me. I found that most of the time in my ministry and all these years of pastoring and doing the things, God had it more, it was more about, it wasn't, you know, it, he used it and there was a lot of people that came to Christ. And, but it was not, it was more about the minister and God changing me than ever it was about my ministry. And I see that at this point of my life, after all these years, it's been more about changing me. And yet through that, then God's allowed me to use me to be able to touch in other people's life. But it was more about changing Ron, the minister, than the ministry. And, and I think and, and you see that in this story too. Of all this coming down, God's using it to take him to a place of exaltation. He's taking him to going to take him to a whole other level at one of these points. So Joseph prospers even in the prison. And says, But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy. If God blessed him when he was thrown in the pit, when his family was right there and they're having an old party and they're getting ready to sell him off. God blessed him as a slave. It should not be surprising to us that God blessed him as a prisoner. He blessed him even in the prison with all he's doing. And none of these terrible circumstances derail God's plan in Joseph's life at all. Nothing derailed the plan. Makes me think of the scripture, all things work for the good to those that are the cold. Even the things that I don't, you know, even the really bad things, yeah. God takes them, you, th you know, you think you take a bad situation and he can take that and something very bad that happened to you and flip it for good? Sure he can. He does it all the time. We don't, we don't see as you see it like that. And so, as he's going all this, Joseph is falsely accused, but he's been blessed. But the Lord was with Joseph. We've seen that over and over. We just read that 39.21. The Lord was with him in 39.23. And it's not... He 
he did that because of his faithfulness. And all that you see in all of this, as he went through this whole deal, and he had the accusation thrown at him, and all that was said to him, you don't even hear a response of, no, I didn't do this. I'm not guilty. You hear nothing. I had to look up a few couple of scriptures that made me think of these. Yeah, so that's, that's this whole thing was transpiring. But it makes me think of Jesus. And Jesus, remember when he was before them and he said he, they, they, all the accusations were put out and he was silent? Mm -hmm. It's the same idea. And he says, then, they marvel at you know, all of this. You, you see that, that it was amazing um, that he didn't say a word. And yet through this whole thing, he's being faithful. And God's honoring it, and God's plus, blessing it. And so we come to the storyline's going to shift just a tad, but not by much. Uh, chapter 40. It says, that came to pass after these things that the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt offended their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was angry with his two officers, which was the chief butler and the chief baker. Now, the baker obviously was the cook. Everything that was cooked was brought to, in to the king. The butler had the toughest job of all. He had to eat and taste everything before the king ate it. So if somebody's trying to poison the king, guess who's probably going to drop first? Uh -huh. The butler. <laughs> and so he had the toughest job of all. But so there's something that's transpired that angered him. I don't know if they're trying to poison him or what they were trying to do. But they both ended up in prison. And so the king's angry with them. He Pharaoh's put him there. And so... As this is going on, we may think about, you know, well, what did they try to do and take, and take it from that viewpoint. But as we get into this story, and as this story begins to unfold, and this whole thing about the account that begins to develop, one thing for sure that we know, that God was using that baker and that butler to make sure they met Joseph. And the story's going to set up from there. And so as this happens like this, they're difficult. Difficult to tell, you know, what, what was going on. We don't know, but we know the storyline progresses, um, how, how it plays out. Most likely that some, there was a plot for murder. Now was the, was the, The butler in on it too? Any of you ever played the game of Clue? The butler did it. Candlestick. <laughs> 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 the candlestick. And, you know, uh, it's kind of this thing, there's a storyline going on here, okay? Was he it? We don't know. We're going to know as this plays out, how the story goes. But God's using it to set the stage to take Joseph with all that he's been through. I mean, think about how much years has went by. From the age of 17, he's at least 28. When, when he, here, he's going here, he spends a couple years in there, so he's tipping 30. And his life's, and from most people's perspective, would say, that's terrible. Just ripped it from his family, only but God had his hand in it, and it was for a purpose and for a reason as this whole thing plays out. And so, the butler's, the butler's job was to not only just the cupbearer, make sure he had any wine, anything that he did, he had to do that. But again, he had, to, he had to be the taste tester, I guess you would say. We would use that term today to make sure that everything was okay. You know, and of course, you know, the Pharaoh probably had a lot of enemies, didn't he? A lot going on that he was, you know, there was those who were out to plot to overthrow him. And I guess any time that you have people that you know go to that kind, I said I would never want to be so 
to the point you can't walk down the street and just be a regular person. But there's a lot of people in life too that, that was like that. Um, remember Howard Hughes? The story of Howard Hughes? He was got paranoid in his old age, very bad. He said everybody's trying to kill him, and I'm sure he had stories of reasons why that paranoia just took uh, got out of control like that. And so he was. He they said he they had this whole process that. It, he had to have all this silverware wrapped up and uh, you know, this whole situation that was done to, to make sure that he wasn't being poisoned. That would not be a good life, no matter how much money. He became a prisoner in all that he had, didn't he? Mm -hmm. And that's very important that, you know, too many times, you know, we get so caught up, especially in this culture, about things and stuff. We get, you know, the more, you know, you see the more stuff you have, the more successful you are. You are as long as that stuff don't have you. Hmm? You know what I said? Yeah. Because when you become trapped with all that and it becomes to control you, that's not a good place to be. And so anyway, as in our storyline, this is what's going on. So the butler was in charge. The baker, the, the, the baker was in charge of cooking the food preparation. And it's the whole thing's difficult. Um, but Joseph is going to step into this. Remember, because everybody that comes to the prison, including the baker and the butler, he's going to figure out what to do with them. And God's going to use this whole story to move forward. Now, I didn't take any more to take any further than this. I knew we'd probably run out early tonight. But I just thought we wanted to at least get started and take it to that point. And uh, <clears throat> so is there any questions, any, any closing thoughts? Anybody? You guys are quiet tonight. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to pick this story up next week as we move through chapter 40. We're going to find out how this plays out. But God is using this to set the stage through how he learned to, to be the administrator of Potiphar's house and now be the administrator in the prison. And he's actually going to be literally exalted to the throne. He's, he ends up being over all, all the grain, all the food supply for all of Egypt. And not just Egypt, but for the whole world at that time, including his own family. And we're going to see how that plays out. Remember the whole thing that still hasn't happened yet is these dreams that this young man kept having. My family's going to bow down to me. You know how mad they got at him? Well, we're going to see how this plays out in the reality of those things. Sometimes, you know, if the guy could give you an insight and give you a, a, an understanding, even it's a prophetic thing that you can kind of think of, that God's showing you may happen with your life, but sometimes it's best just to keep it to yourself. I told you that story about Lyndon. Mm -hmm. About, I made the mistake at 15 saying, I'm going to marry you one day. <laughs> you know what? The Lord just had told me that. And I felt that, and I was right. <laughs> But I had to get past you, weirdo. Get away from me. I, create, I created my own wall. <laughs> I created my own wall <laughs> by not keeping my mouth shut. And so maybe there's some great wisdom in what we looked at tonight. The great wisdom of this young man. Just, he didn't fight back. He didn't argue with it. He accepted it as it came. Because he understood and he knew that he's in the hands of God. And God's in control of all of this. And sometimes that's the best place to be, isn't it? Just to mm -hmm. trust in him no matter what we face and not to wrestle with it. But too many times, and I'm guilty of it too, is uh, we take it to the Lord in prayer, and say, Lord, I'm just giving you this, I'm gonna leave it here. And then I say, Amen, and I pick it right back up. <laughs> Huh? Huh? You ever done that? that? It's so easy to do. To just think, no, just to walk away from it because it gets, you know, we, we want to see the result first. And it don't work that way. As we can see in all of this, God says, let go and just trust me. Even though you can't see, begin to even begin to figure out what I'm doing, let go of it. And he understood that as a very young man. Let's leave it there for tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. 
We thank you for your word. We thank you for this lesson. And Lord, there's so much that we can learn from that young man, how he learned to trust in you. You put these in, in here, not just as stories, but to be examples for us, Lord, that even in our own lives, the things that we struggle with and the things that seem overwhelming, that we look to you. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. You are the one who made the, transi tra the transformation in our lives, Lord. And when we teach us, Lord, to depend upon you and look to you, Lord, we just commit this night into your hands, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we'll pick that one up next week.